previously on Balls. Giving commentary anyway. Uh, do you think, oh, that's crazy that none of our uh, our test matches are not broadcast anywhere on radio. Yeah, you know, um, I would like brilliant radio face. <laughs> to do those kind of commentary I would you. pay money to listen to you commentate rugby. <laughs> Love it, yeah. There's, there we go. <laughs> I would. There's a new. There's a, there's there's one of probably many new vocations for you, uh, but obviously still very much a rugby man. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to Balls Radio, Dip. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> nice to have you here. I know we've spoken to you on the phone a, a couple of times from. Uh, you were at home both times, huh? Yeah, but it's good to see you, man. No, it's nice to person. see you. You're looking well. Uh, I am well. Eh? I feel well. Relaxed. Yeah. No new problems. My uh, <laughs> my last problem I had last year in in New Zealand. Yeah. With Bryce, you know, that's my last problem I had. Yeah, Bryce, good old Bryce. Eh? Well, we're gonna we're, obviously uh, you've been doing the tour. Now you must have been very busy this week, being all over the place promoting your uh, promoting the book. How's that going? I hope it's going well. Um, the tour is going really well. We uh, did receive some positive feedback from the people, and um, yeah, uh, so we just hope that we we we, we sell the books. All right, we, uh, we and we've got we, we've actually gone out and not, we haven't asked for any free ones. We've actually went out and bought some. That's great. Did you, did you read it? Uh, and I haven't read it yet. I'll be very honest with you. I haven't I haven't read it yet. Um, but we have bought some free ones and I bought some books and we're going to give two away this afternoon on the show. They've yeah. signed them already. And yeah, you've signed. Thank you for signing those. Well, it's, for a, us. it's a must read for 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 you, especially you know. Um, because I value your 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 no, well, I will definitely criticism. when when, uh, when yeah, it'll be const- maybe constructive or uh, yeah, it'll just be very interesting to read because it's obviously you've been picking up little bits and pieces about uh, you know in the in the press and what people have been sort of picking out of the book and there obviously some parts of it that uh, people like to latch on more than others, but I'm sure there's a lot more than that we haven't even heard about that is in there. Yeah, I think uh, people want to sell papers again. Um, mm. You just have to read the book yourself. Um, if you if you if you start with on page one and, and and go right through it, you'll get the full picture of of what's really happening there. Mm. And um, yeah, we didn't write the book to get to anybody, to get to anyone. It's just to tell a story, and uh, I think the story comes across quite nicely. Gavin did a good job. What to tell us the story of, as to how the book came about? When did you think about doing a book? Was it while you were still coach? Does it go back a year, two years, or was this sort of something that that only came about more recently? Kevin, you know, um, I, I saw what books can do to people, mm. and I decided not to, to, to write one. But there were three things that really forced me to do it. Firstly, when, when I was announced as, as not for rugby reasons only, um, it put me on a back foot. And then everybody wanted to know where did he come from. So let's just start on that. How long ago was that after you were actually nominated as coach? That was obviously a comment that Oregon made, right? It was the same day with the announcement. The same day? With the announcement. (laughs) Really? Was it the same day? The day with the announcement. That's how the announcement was made. (laughs) Something for me that I wanted, I thought saw something great in my life. I started off with the wrong footing, you know. And um, uh, as I said the other day, he never said anything negative when he announced Heineken. But he never said anything positive too. Uh. So, so um, why didn't he say some, something negative when I was announced? That, that is amazing. So you basically, I mean, that, uh, did that sort of pop up in your head often while you were the coach? Uh, uh, of the, I mean, were you basically then doing your job, first of all, to basically do the job that you love to do? But also, was there any S aspect of you doing your job where you were trying to actually prove prove uh, Oregon and the powers that be wrong after having made that comment? Was there any part of it where you had to sort of either stop yourself saying, I'm not doing this just to prove people wrong. I'm actually doing this because I believe I'm a great coach and I'm going to show that I'm a great coach for rugby reasons. Yeah, that's the reason why I was there and that's a, that I never took my eye off the goal. But it was always in the back of your mind, you know, that, that um, you have to prove the people in South Africa. Because if you look at, at our, where our country went, um, if people announce you like that, you must now look at the background with Jake White having having won the World Cup mm. and as a successful coach. Now we bring this guy in, not for rugby reasons only. I mean, you, you, if you can just imagine what what it what it what it actually did to me. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing, when people ask where do you come from, you never coach a Curry Cup team, you never coach uh, Super 15. So what do you really know about the game? Mm. But the last thing and, and the last throw in in France. When I did an interview with a journalist and he asked, told me, well, only 20 years in the rugby and you were the springboard coach already, so you made it quite uh, quick due to the top. And then I realized nobody knows that, that we played this game for more than 100 mm. years. Um, if I don't tell the story, 
um, people will never know. And I just have an obligation towards everybody um, outside South Africa in, and inside South Africa to, to make them understand where we really came from. Mm. And that's where the book came from. I remember, I think, uh, it might not have been the first time I met you, but I think the first time I actually chatted to you, we did a, a thing with Castle Lager at, uh, I think it was in PE. And Jake was down there as the guest. And I remember you were there as well. But I think part of the, in those days, it was the, uh, the Spears. Uh, there was obviously the whole getting that together. And I remember chatting to both of you in the locker room. You were both there together. And back then, I, I, was, uh, I was told, obviously in discussion, that, listen, Peter's, uh, you know, Peter's going to be our next, uh, one of our next Springbok coaches soon. So it's not that people didn't see you. This is way before you were, anyone even knew uh, that, that you were even in the running for this. Mm. But there were people, obviously, that saw... Uh, some value in you as a coach. Some potential. Some potential. That thought, listen, this <laughs> yeah. guy's going to be a Springbok coach soon. So, you know, it's, it's not necessarily all to do with what Oregon said. Yeah, but you know what? The general public, do they, do they really know? You know, that is That your kind of stuff never gets out, though, yeah, because, you know, as you say, the headlines always go, yeah. Oregon says he's only there because, uh, because he's, co- he's, he's colored. Yeah. You know, that, that's the kind of thing that never gets into the papers. Yeah, so that is the reason why the book is there, and um, it's a must read. Uh, there's a lot of stories there's a lot of positives there's a lot of lessons to be learned about life um one i can say from from the top of my head now is um don't take your eye off any goal if you've got a dream go for it um there will be a lot of 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 of, of uh, uh, guys will try to hold you back mm. but what i learned in life is that nobody's jealous on you uh, nobody will be will be ever be jealous on, on me or you they're only jealous on their own inabilities mm. And then they try to drag you down, you know. And if you allow it, there's something wrong with your character. Yeah. So, yeah, there's little, little lessons for each and every one of us in there. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of highlights. There's a lot of lowlights too. But um, it's a must read for everybody. And well, that doesn't mean he talks about Vaynant a lot. <laughs> highlights. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Vaynant's hair now, by the way? No, I didn't see it. I. You haven't seen it? No, I didn't see it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it looks like he's got brown shoe polish in there. Yeah, but you must understand one thing. I, I don't even pick up girls or women's hair. So why would I look at his hair and something wrong with me? There's something wrong with you guys, I'm telling you. <laughs> Dude, we're, in the, we're attentive. We're in the media. Yeah, we have to watch all we these things. We have to do this. No, from what he came from to where he is now, wow, it hits you like a, like a brick. <laughs> Maybe it's yes. Kiwi sponsorship. <laughs> oh, yes. John, no puns with windows here. I'd like to ask Div. How can I? Sorry, before you ask the question, don't forget what it is. Let's just put it out there right now because Twitter's going mad. A lot of people are talking about whether we should do commentary on Saturday or not. Yeah. Um, but uh, also, if you want to uh, put something up on Twitter and you have a, a question or comment to make for uh, for the coach, then uh, all you have to do is put it on Twitter, and one of our uh, both books will go to somebody that that tweets we've, us today. I think today. we've got more actually. What? I think we've got oh, a few you, more. did you bring some more as well? Okay. You see, we wanted to actually say, listen, we're not going to get free books. We'll pay so that you get, your, you get the money out of the book. But how many books have you brought in? I'm, I'm black and ugly, but I'm not stupid <laughs> and I don't come cheap. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll select some of our best comments and uh, questions off Twitter as well this afternoon. Balls Radio is where we are. Balls Radio, if you have a question or comment for the coach, the best ones will uh, we'll end up with a signed copy of the book, which yeah. we'll uh, get into in just a moment. Simon? I'd like to ask Dev, how... Cause it's it's well documented. You you didn't have an easy ride with the media. How has, did your family d- deal with that when you were taking a lambasting in the press and everyone was having a go at you? How how did your wife and two two kids handle it? Yeah, people um, normally ask me what would you have changed if you if you can do this all over again. There's one thing that I would really change. I will never get married. You know, um, for that fact only. Um, mm. it, it, what what was supposed to be joy in in in, in people's lives. Um, became a painful experience for them, and um, it had an impact on, on especially the younger girls' uh, um, schoolwork. But um, at the end, we all much stronger through it, and now she realizes that um, that people will will hit you wherever you go in life. Mm. And what she learned too is not about how hard people can hit; is how hard life can hit, and people can ne- can never hit as hard as life, you know. So um, yeah, I think through this whole thing, there was a. Nice character building exercise too. Now that's one thing. I mean, it does build character. Was there any, ever a time in your uh, in, in in your tenure as the coach where you went home and sat with your with your wife and kids and said, "I'm giving this up. I'm, I'm chucking it in because of, uh, as you say, ignorant people's comments or something like that." Well, I couldn't. No, 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 not at all. But I couldn't. Um, the day with that sex tape, um, 
uh, I never I never thought that people would go that sink that low to to get you out of a job, you know. Um, and then I just realized, why would I fight mm. the powers to be? But what I missed is that 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 you don't don't generalize. Then is one or two pe uh, people who who don't want you there, and mm. they've got the the backing maybe of the media, and then they put a story out there, and then the rest of the guy, the world are as shocked as you. So um, I just said, said to myself, um, I started this thing, and I will finish it. Yeah. And um, yeah, thankfully I did. Did anyone ever produce a tape at all? I messed up everything in my life. I messed that up too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was editing skills. <laughs> you would have made a fortune. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can you imagine? I mean, that, yeah, that's the one thing they always go for. There's a, there's a sex tape out there. I mean, that, that always sells newspapers. That'll yeah. always sell any kind of, because people want to know whether, they, whether it's true or not. They'll, they'll want to look into it. I think the yeah, only, yeah, only yeah. rumor was John's sex tape, which actually did exist, but no one cared. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, John, um, if you look at from from different, um, and for different reasons, yeah. a lot of people um, wanted me out, out of the job, you know. And um, you had to fight a, a kind of army, but, but shooting from different directions, you know. Mm. Luckily, up till now, I'm bulletproof. And, um, I could but you always have been. Yeah, you always have I had been to deal with in my in my in my under nineteen days. I had to deal with you, and that made me bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we we made a we made a when we phoned you first time. I think the day you got announced as coach, we phoned you, and I don't forget. We said to you, said uh, or you said to us, said well, you will uh, whenever you phone me, I will talk to you. So, and I said, well, is that four years time as well? And he says, whenever you phone me, I will talk to you. And you did. You lived yeah. up to that. And, I mean, that was through not only good times. It's easy for a coach to talk to you in the good time. I know, I know coaches that have been before, come before you who would talk to you any day of the week when things were going well. And you lose a couple of games, and suddenly the lager gets drawn around them. And you cannot find them, even if uh, you could find Carlos a jackal before you could get hold of them. Yeah. So, you know, that's the one thing. I mean, if anything, no one can accuse you of not being consistent. Man of your word. Uh, uh, then, you know, um, um, for me, it was a privilege to be part of the game. I never mm. made the game part of me. Um, I was always a servant of it. And I understood that, that everybody in this country, somewhere in, in each and every household, some, somebody were part of, of the game rugby and they do love it and do cherish it. Mm. So you're a servant of your country and you just have to serve them. Yeah. And I tried to do it that way. Um, never got it always right, but but most of the time, we got it right. Johnny? Now, Pete, I wanted to ask you with John Smith, and that was just the way you had a good rapport with the, with the players, and especially here as captain, when you had to shift him from tight head uh, back to hooker, and you told him to put on weight here, to lose weight. How did he handle all of that under, the, under those kind of circumstances? Yeah, you know, uh, that's why I respect the guy so much, you know. The country needed him. Um, uh, and he had, what, 80, 84 tests at that time. He could have said, no, 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 no. I'm at mm -hmm. the end of my career. I want to end it off in a high in this position, and, mm. and he just make the, the, the shift because the country needed him. And um, he did very well that year for us. I mean, he played in, he's in the Lion Series, and, and um, if you look at if you look at uh, um, when 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 Yanni came onto the scene again, and we we went quite well in that position, I asked him to move back again. Yes. Um, he then he then didn't. Uh, I had any problems, um, but then again, I asked him, now listen, I ask you to pick up weight, now I ask you to lose weight. And you all know that's not that easy, you know. I mean, Darren can tell you that. <laughs> no, it's easy for him. <laughs> yeah. Simon? Um, and what about the rumors, Div, that the senior players were, were running the setup, the guy like John and Victor? Yeah, you know what? Um, I think, I think I'm, a, I'm a brilliant uh, kind of leader. People want to follow me. Uh, the reason for that is I allow people to bring their ideas to the table. Um, rugby is an 80 minute game and that's only the, the tip of the iceberg. The, the, the amount of work we really put in from Sunday till Saturday is, a, is, is huge, you know. Now, if you want to be the, the only oak, um, they will go out there and they'll do their own thing too. But if you involve them in, 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 in every planning session and what you want to achieve and how you can, can get there, they take ownership of it. So that 80 minutes that the people see, that's the 80 minutes that they will, will actually be your, your, your um, mouthpiece onto the field. And um, I had to, to make them buy into whatever I want to do. I did it at the 19 level with my captain and my senior players. I did it on the 21 level. 
And whenever, wherever I coach, it's very, very important that the guys that are, are going onto the field, they share the views and uh, because your views can, can, mm. can sometimes be destructive. But it is a team effort. I mean, if, you, if you're working and you're stepping into a side that's just won a World Cup with, and, and it's become a, a, a big culture in South African rugby with so many leaders in the side, why wouldn't you tap into what they know? They're the guys that do the job yeah. on the field. Uh, we always, I mean, we're talking about the Bafana manager now as well, as who's the guy, because clearly there's an attitude problem with some of the players. They want to play some weeks, they don't want to play because they don't have the buy-in of their, of their manager. And their attitude is they feel, well, we don't like you, we'll just get somebody else in and you'll get fired, we won't. Yeah. So you, you seem to have, an, and I know because John in particular, you know, I don't, I've never met anyone who doesn't like John, mm. and hasn't got the respect for John. He was very defensive of you throughout his entire career. And you hear people make comments and, mm. the, you know, people go up and, and you'd overhear someone say something to John thinking that uh, he would automatically come back and agree with the guy or whatever. And he'd, be, and he'd turn on the guy and be very defensive of you because, once again, people pick up Stompies and they don't know what goes on in that environment. And John had an immense respect for you and mm. still does to this day. Yeah, Darren, I think that we, we realize that we are running a rugby cabinet. Um, mm. And we wanted the, the country to believe in us. Um, we had to, we had to, 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 to close all the cracks. And there's only one way you close cracks, and that is to be very honest and bluntly with people behind the scenes. But whenever you step out to where the public see, then they see that it's a, it's a, it's a team that's unified. Everybody is fighting the same goal, and they're there for us. And I think that is what, what we got right at the people, so that our team mm. played for them, you know. Yeah. And that's the thing. I don't know why everyone bangs on about this. And, and obviously, when, when I was doing the TV stuff, people used to always you know, have a lot of advice before you go and do a show about, be controversial, say this, ask this question, <laughs> ask why this doesn't happen. Why are people so obsessed with the fact that the coach cannot, be, uh, cannot let the players make the decisions for themselves? Because in effect, a coach isn't there to teach a, a, yeah, a, no. any springbok how to play rugby. No. If he's in the springbok setup and he doesn't know how to play rugby yet, he shouldn't be there. You just guide him. You're quite right. You're there. a man manager. Uh, I, I had this question at the breakfast one morning um, when one of the big bosses of a big com com um, company asked me, um, I believe that Dick and Gary are doing the job and you're doing nothing. And they were sitting next to me there. And I said to him, Mel, you tell me why you're sitting here <laughs> at this breakfast. The reason why you're sitting here because you're the boss. Other people are doing the job. That's why they have to do the job. I'm the boss too, you know. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> and so, so people don't. But now nobody asks any questions. And we've got for every department of of the game, mm. we've got a consultant going with the Springboks. Almost close to twenty people. They, nobody asks any questions. Yeah, we're going to take. Uh, we'll take, as I say, lots of SMSs coming through. We will, uh, and, and uh, one of one of the questions. I think one or two people have mentioned Bryce already. I actually want to take issue with the whole Bryce thing from the World Cup. Uh, look, I've never liked him as a ref. <laughs> I mean, he's the moodiest ref in the world. He gets grumpy with players. He gets grumpy with players. But never once in that, in that game. No, yeah. Never once in that game. I no, no, that. no not, not, not get grumpy outwardly, but you can see his body language. He gets grumpy with players. And if it happens to be, and he hates Sharks players. Everyone hates Sharks You put Sharks players in the box you. side, you are stuffed if Bryce Lawrence wow. is there. Darren, if you go watch that game again, he never once got grumpy with the players. That was one thing that I picked up um, outside of his character, he, 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 he said to John and later to Victor that game when they, when they asked him questions, um, normally he's very cocky and he said, I made a decision, mm. so, so um, just go away. He said to them, I, I didn't see it, but I'll look for it next time. I didn't see it, I'll look for it next time. And that's not Bryce Lawrence. But what's Lawrence. going on inside his head, though? That's not Bryce Lawrence that I know, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll chat about that some more. Your uh, favorite ref, uh, ref the opening test in Durban. <laughs> hey? Who? Uh, the New Zealander. Steve Walsh. Steve Walsh. Steve yeah. Walsh. No, Steve's Walsh. got other issues. He just loves yeah. seeing himself on the big screen. <laughs> he loves That's it. all. <laughs> what, a great, what a great hairstyle, eh? <laughs> and he loves looking at it on yes. the big screen, yes. exactly. I yeah. thought you didn't notice that kind of stuff, Dave. No, you no, got no, some there's nothing else to look at that guy. Uh, tweets coming through. Thank you very much. Some interesting questions. Yeah, we'll try and get to those. Johnny, try and keep your supporters short, short and possible, concise yes, as possible. Yes, what yeah. time are the, uh, when are the baby box playing next, by the way? No, they play on uh, so the weekend sun, su Sunday. Sunday against Sunday. Argentina. Must be yeah. very uh, happy after. It started off not too well for them, but uh, that, that win against England must have made you very no, proud. Not bad, not bad. We just let them play, you know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, oh, you've been there, so you yeah, know so exactly how to treat there. these guys. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, and it's good. Uh, it's always nice to see. I mean, I was just telling you, we were talking to somebody else in Scotland, got, uh, got absolutely pummeled by someone in their juniors. And we say, they must be really panicky about their rugby. I you know what, if you, look at, if you look at Scotland, they don't have a lot of talent, so they need more structure. We've got a lot of talent, so we need less structure. 
But we saw structure that we actually killing the guys. He's throttling the game. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, it is. All right. More from uh, Peter De Villiers coming up. He's our in studio guest today. Coming up a little later, Mark Banks, L O L Z. We'll also be going over to Troon and uh, seeing and speaking to Brandon Stone. Uh, see what he's up to over there. Plus, uh, Neil Collins will be talking football Euro 2012. Are you watching much of that, Dave? Yeah, you know, um, if you if you if you if you look at our our, tele, our national television in, here in South Africa too, there's so much soccer. If you don't take, take um, part of those kind of things, you will be bored in, in life. Yeah. So soccer and golf and those things, yeah, they keep you busy when when you're alone. When you got those down times, absolutely. Yeah. We're very spoiled actually, as far as what we get yeah. to see on TV. I think so. Eh? All right, so on uh, on the performance last week while we're there and. Uh, and how much you would have loved to work with uh, with some of these new guys? It's exciting times. You've got two brand new locks. They stood up last week, as I said they would. Uh, but yeah, it's really exciting. We've put some new guys in. We beat the Palms first game. And uh, do you think that, that uh, it's going to be even a uh, bigger margin this weekend? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, the guys weren't, weren't that good. But if you can win when you're that bad, um, and you can come become better because now they're together for two weeks, so now I believe it's going to be tough for the for the English to come back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Working with them, I think for Ineka, I wish him well because um, it's his time now. We just have to support him, and um, I, I think he's passionate about what he's doing. And if he believes in what he's doing and he's doing it for the right reasons, there's no other reason why we shouldn't mm. be behind him. Everyone's saying we can only improve, as you just said, but uh, England can't really get much better. No, I don't. I don't think that. There's always. Uh, a place of improvement for, for, for any side, you know. Um, it was a challenge Saturday for us. Now we know we can do it. Mm. Um, are we that hungry again or still the same? Or will England come out and, and prove a point, you know? So it's always difficult to, to call to mm. call those kind of things. And then there's injuries. Um, I don't know if everything will, will, will run in the same, at the same speed. But now we should, we should um, do that very easy. Should win comfortably. Johnny, as I said, I haven't even read John Smith's book yet. I'm, uh, that's one of my things. Is I love reading books on stats and stuff when it has to like sit down. I, I, I try to read When the Lion Feeds by Wilbur Smith. I still haven't got past page 111. The truth is you do start the books. I do start them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the last book I finished was Trompy. I promise you. That was yeah, a but He was like you, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks a lot for your tweets. We'll get to some of those. And some really, uh, there are some really good comments and questions here as well. You've got a lot of support out there, Div. A lot of support. I hope out so. There. I hope so. You know, um, I try. I think um, people miss you. I tried my best to bring hope to people to be I themselves. You. you know, mm. um, a lot of people want you to be that conventional guy who, who's got a script in front of him, and that's how you live your life. Um, no, if, if the sun shines, then you tell the people the sun is shining. If your script is wrong. You just tell it the mm. way you see it, you know. Is there anything you regret saying during your tenure? No, no. I mean, uh, I only answer questions. Now, if it was bad answers, you must, you must, you must listen to the questions. <laughs> 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 That's a good point. <laughs> and you never, never, you, you never failed to notice when, uh, when someone did ask you a bad question. I mean, you, never, you, you weren't, sure, you weren't uh, shy to say to me, uh, now and again, put me in my place when I had to ask you a question and you... Uh, didn't like it. Yeah, but you were clued up. You, you were clued up. Eh? You, you, were, you were there forever. There's a, there's a few guys who came with their, with their um, column already written, you know. They only looked for a, for a capture. To say what they Yeah, written. and then yeah. I gave them the wrong answers. They had to go change the whole thing. <laughs> and, you know, they had lazy buggers, some of those uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> writers, you know. Bryce Lawrence. Uh, no, as I said, he's not. Uh, I think I said on Super Bowl one day during a game that I said when he when I heard he got the Super Rugby final, I said they must have done it in a lucky draw because that's the only way he could get that game. I don't think he's a good ref. I think he's a moody ref. I think he goes based on his uh, his mood and what he feels towards one side or the other. Um, but that game, I honestly don't think he had a say one way or the other, or he influenced that result because we could not have done anything else correct than what we did in that game. The only thing was obviously. I mean, how many more times do you think Faree would drop a ball in that position? Mm -hmm. He'll never do it. It just happened. It just happened to be one of those freaky days where, when it came to putting the points on the board, you know, Mornay's drop goes over nine times out of ten. Faree never drops the ball in that position. I mean, we should have destroyed them, in that, and we did. Every facet of that game, we could not have done better. If you look at if you look at, at those kind of things, the mistakes we made that day, that's a normal kind of. If you look at Saturday's game, the mistakes we made. If you look at the All Blacks, the mistakes they made, that's normal in a rugby game because that is how it, the, the cookie crumbles, you mm. know. But we did enough to win that game. Um, he made six match-costing mistakes in that game. 
Um, but and, regardless, of that, we should have still won, even yeah, with even, those but, mistakes. But you, know, yeah. but you know, when you play, you play that level, yeah. in, in that competition, um, it's crucial when you make those kind of bad decisions. You know, um, if, if if we scored where where they stole our ball and and, and they scored, you know, mm. um, it would have been a different ball game. And you can look at at, at most of these referees. If you just just look at them. Some of them are comfortable to referee the game between the 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 the, the, the two twenty twos. Um, and, they'll, and they'll take the game there. Mm. You can predict, me and my, my daughter were sitting one, I told her, listen here, just look where the arm will go now, I'm telling you now. Because there's 20 things that he can uh, uh, blow for. Mm. So it will go to the team that's on the try line now so that he can get back and, 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 and making mistakes in the middle of the field again. Mm. And that's the kind of stuff that we, we need to look at. Um, I say that the refereeing can become better if we give them the responsibility again. At this moment in time, they don't take any uh, uh, responsibility for, for, for their actions because they can blame either the TMO or they can blame the touch judges. Yeah. Uh, I didn't make the call, you know. And so, I mean, some of them get rewarded for having shocking games. I mean, why is a guy, you know, I would say that a guy like Alan Roland has cost us a test match. I would say Bryce Lawrence didn't cost us that test match. I would just, I would, because we should have won it anyway, even with all these cock ups. We should have won it by 10 to 15 points the way we were playing. I don't think I've seen the Springboks play better rugby than that game. Yeah, we played well, but still, yeah. You know what um, I'm saying? That, that yeah, there's one are. thing. There's one thing that stands out in any game, and international for our country, rugby specifically, is the scoreboard. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. It's uh, we just didn't get the points on yeah. the board, and and it'll never happen again. You know, you would never ever say that those things would happen from from a player point of view. They were just sort of basic things. You look at it, and go. For he would never do that again in front of the trial light. It just happened to happen on that day because it just wasn't our day. And it's, it's a pity because, as I say, I thought that was the best rugby our Springbok team played for years in that game. Yeah. We were destroying them. And they know we, we destroyed them as well, which is the pity because had we gone through there, uh, it was like, we get through this game, I think we, we're going to go very, look, the All Blacks were very, very, uh, they were a great side. I tend to agree with you because we just got better and better and better yeah. every every game we played, each game we played. Yeah. So, yeah, I tend to agree with you, but we will never know. As you say, <laughs> it's, it's not there and uh, we'll never know. Uh, some of the, uh, Johnny, just give me that number again, yeah, by the there way. There we go. Some of the, um, I was just going to say, Charlie Hodgson penalty closes the gap. Uh, for Barbarians I think it's Charlie Hodgson that's not Roy uh, Barbarians need 7-3 with 7 minutes gone thanks a lot Taste for uh, giving us an update we're going to uh, make a quick call and just go through some of your tweets if you had to coach any super rugby team or go and coach another team now uh, which one would you like to get an offer from which team yeah. would you like to work with yeah it, any, any, any way I can make a difference you know if I can add value to to, to the cause, I would love to be there. I just don't want to be there because they need someone. Mm. I want to be there because I can add value. So I don't have a problem. And at this moment, our teams are doing doing quite well. Um, even your team, uh, uh, your ex-team, the Lions, I mean, you're converted. Ex-team, uh, thank you. Yeah. Long, just 10 years now, Dirk. Uh, yeah, but I know your history, you know. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so even they're not doing bad, you know. The scoreboard is not in their favor, but they're not doing too bad, you know. And they're gone. Yeah, I think they Difficult pecked, to they play rugby when you know you've got no future. They picked up already. Eh? Yeah, it is sad. Uh, thanks a lot to... Where was that question from? Someone mentioned that one. We've got so many tweets that's updating. Tian, uh, thanks a lot. You're going to get one of uh, Peter de Villiers' books, the uh, Politically Incorrect book. We're going to send that to you. Man, just make a note of who these people are on Twitter so I don't forget. Also, uh, thanks a lot to Bonga Zondo. Uh, he's actually put work on hold to listen to you on Balls Radio. So worth it. He says you're a legend. Bongo is going to uh, Bongo is going to get a book as well. I'm so glad he's not working for me, you know. <laughs> JP Fenter uh, says must have been the man behind the snore is even more impressive than the snore itself. <laughs> P. Divi, right guy, wrong ref. All right, JP Fenter, you're going to get uh, one of those books as well. And uh, one or two more. How many books have we got? I don't want to give away too many. We, we're allowed to give these away as well. Huh? So we've got another one, two, three, four, five, six, another five. Uh, Bushan Ravji. New respect for Pete Devi. This guy is brilliant. Really awesome listening to him. So uh, Bushan, you are uh, also going to get one of those books as well. We'll uh, identify a few more people. Thanks a lot for your tweets. And uh, we'll let you know if you are going to get one of those. Dick is not answering, John. He's going to voicemail. So that oh, didn't work. Okay. <laughs> um so now, uh, where, where were we going? Okay, Simon, you wanted a question, first of all. Uh, no, I just wanted to read a tweet. Miles uh, wants to ask you if you get free Bach test tickets for life. Oh, yes, there's one of them. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people out there who, who, who never had a, um, 
they always wanted to go to to a to a test game. I would identify those kind of people, and I will I will definitely um, take one of those people to the test. Oh, so you'll take them with you as your guest. Yeah, but if they if they badly want to take somebody else, I'll definitely give it to them because you know it's a it's a lifetime experience to 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 be there. I had it for free, um, and I would love to to share it with a lot of people. Uh, Miles sources his box played like world champs in 11 quarter, but last played in 07 quarter like Muchus in one. <laughs> Bounce of oval ball, respect. That's Miles's uh, Miles's comment. And uh, Eric said, if every country in the world saw your brilliance and offered you coaching job for millions, which country would you choose and why? Yeah, at this moment, I think um, I would love to go to Fiji to go go do it there. The the the, the people are brilliant. The, the weather are brilliant. Uh, everything it's, it's, it's an environment you can live in you know yeah. there's, there's, there's what th- 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 uh, th- uh, two thirds of the the year it's summer so it will be a brilliant to be there but I would love to to give everything that I learned back rather to my own people um, because not all of us will have the privilege to to mm. get that uh, intellectual properties we were chatting about the islanders the pacific islanders or south sea islanders as they were known when they did play as a unit once um, and we were saying that, you know, obviously, and, and we see them coming through for the All Blacks often. We see young Surveyor coming through now as well. And every year there's a new guy that comes from Tonga or Samoa yeah. or somewhere. Yeah, they are poor countries, you know. And, but and why is no one putting money into them? Because rugby needs another entity to enter the fray. I mean, we've got Argentina joining the four nations now. Why do we not have the South Sea Islanders and someone putting money into them? Because people will go and watch them. They play great rugby. I think you can you can you can relate it back to the Bryce Lawrence thing too. Um, if 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 there's a lot of money in those Islanders, where will New Zealand be? Well, who cares? No, it's I like mean, us going, okay. But, well, we want to pick exactly from Argentina. I, that's exactly what I want to bring across. Yeah. So somebody's putting a hold on those kind of things, because um, the, the profit of not having them there the, uh, is in their is in their favour. So, so um, I'm telling you now, this world rugby uh, in, in, in the Northern Hemisphere, it will be England, it will rule the, rule the rugby there, and down here with us is New Zealand. Yeah, is that, is that the future? No, that's not the future, but they rule the, the game. What they, what oh, you they mean says, from a decision yeah, what point they, of view? What they yeah. say goes, you know, and the IRB yeah. will listen to England all the time. Dick? Yeah, well. How's it going, boss? <laughs> Hey, sorry. well, man, you. Yeah. Good, sorry, this number's come up a few times. John keeps forgetting to tell people that it's a Joburg number, no, not his cell number. I told him he knows, I told uh, sorry, Dick. Dickie was on the other line, he couldn't hear you. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Durban. Are you in Durban? Is that is that yeah. home Is that home for you uh, again, now that now that Peter ran you out of town? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> listen, I, well, I, I'm, I'm too scared to take on another job because... Uh, I don't want to get fired again. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just hanging around here at home. Uh, trying to earn the crust. Eh? All right. Well, you yeah, very good. Thanks. Uh, Div's, Div's listening to you on the, on the headphones. So you can say how's it to your, uh, to your former partner, colleague and boss? Absolutely. How are you, Pete? Even the bad times are good, my friend. Um, yeah, it was I, I, good I, 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 Friday. Tell, I must tell these people we had a brilliant time on Friday, me and you. Um, brought back some big memories. I, I had to uh, <laughs> to escort you again back home, Wait like no. I normally did. But um, <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, uh, it, was, it was good to catch up, Pete. Ah, uh, thanks. Eh? What, what, what's in what's in store for you now, uh, Div? I mean, um, Dick. Yeah, uh, well, I'm just involved with the Investing International Rugby Academy. Uh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're having some fun coaching coaches and coaching players. So and have really you, busy, yeah. and you got Div involved there as well? Are you are you helping out with some of the Investec Rugby Academy guys as well, Div? Okay, we, I were involved when I still had the name, you know. Um, uh, but I, I must commend Dick. I must commend Dick for, for what he started in this country. Um, a lot of the players that came through there, um, they were much stronger than the other ones. And um, uh, only the, uh, only good hear good things from the coaches. So, um, yeah, um, any time, Dick, uh, that we can support, we will be there because it's a very good course. Yeah, well, Darren, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've used Pete there and we use, uh, we use a host of other coaches, you know, who, uh, who've got experience and can pass on some knowledge. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's nice to tap into guys like Peter, you know, with, uh, with his experience. Obviously, now he's got a little bit more time, so I'm definitely going to be leaning on his shoulder to get him involved in more in the courses. Awesome stuff. Uh, and uh, as, as uh, so two guys have gone this sort of uh, separate ways, otherwise, uh, sort of sum up what it was like working with Peter as a, as a coach. <laughs> 
I've well, got your number. I've got your done. number, please. Eh? I've book, got your number. The book's out. It's, it's all honest, so we're all honest here, Dick. <laughs> There was, there was never a dull moment, let me put it that way. <laughs> uh, when, uh, when, uh, whenever you you thought you were heading down a certain road, then uh, you know Pete would uh, would come up with a little surprise. Uh, you know, we we always uh, beg to differ on certain things, uh, but certainly there was a, a definite buy-in and a pulling all in the same direction. So. You know, with uh, with Gary, Peter, and myself working so closely together, we, uh, you know, Peter certainly allowed us to uh, to give our opinions, and uh, and he listened, and uh, sometimes took it, sometimes didn't. But uh, I must say, Peter was his own man, and uh, and it, it was a really enjoyable four years that we had. Absolutely, I think a lot of the players echo that as well. So uh, listen, we look forward to catching up with you again sometime on Balls, uh, Dick. Nice to chat to you again today. And uh, final word from you, Peter, for Dick before yeah. we let him go. Yeah, Dick, give my regards to Richie. Um, I believe that he's um, much better than you were at his age now on the rugby field. So he must be very good. Eh? Well, he's only to give you an example. He's only nine years old, and he's quick. He's already quicker than I was. So <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a future. But is that saying much, Dick? Yeah, is that hard? <laughs> <laughs> you were great, Dick. Dick, if uh, they weren't a man down, eh? <laughs> Dick, if, if there weren't a lot of swearing in that in that in that um, uh, statement that the coloured made in Cape Town about you, I would have. Uh, Post it on air now, but I can, I can hold it back. Eh? Hey, Dick, just as well, he's, just as well, he's only nine because if he was any older, he wouldn't find place. Because I think Robert Dupree has got twenty-five of them coming through now. Anyway, he's going to be he'll take up the entire box side one of these days. By the sounds of things, isn't it unbelievable how good those young kids are? Uh, uh, it's well, really they're young and, and they're monsters. Eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I think the Duprez are going to become their own franchise in Super Rugby soon. The Kings better watch out, or maybe uh, maybe even the Sharks. Who knows? <laughs> nice to chat to you, Dick. We'll catch up with you again soon. All right, boss. Right. Cheers, Cheers bud. Bye, bye. There we go. Dick Muir joining us. I was just having a look while you were chatting there to Dick about. Uh, I had some of the the picks in the middle, yeah, and it goes back to your days with the Falker. Uh, you as a as a young rugby player. For those that didn't believe you ever played the game. Uh, there's, uh, but there's, uh, there's some interesting pictures here as well. I, I, the key one is there's a picture of you and uh, Jacob Zuma. Um, it's very, it's very friendly and stuff. What's he saying to you there? Do you remember? <coughs> yeah, I, I, I need to tell you this about that so, uh, story. See, visual radio, so I can actually show the picture as well. <laughs> there's a story about that, you know. Um, we came back, we just won the, the Tri Nations, and uh, here's the president um, welcoming us back. Al, we were in cloud nine. Um, everybody just loved us. And I went back to the airport to catch a plane to Cape Town. Uh, there's one, this Japanese guy asked me, um, photo? I said, yes, and he handed me the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, brilliant. Are you still on the speaking circuit, by the way? Do you get a lot of after, like, the after dinner talks and things from people still? Yeah, we do, we do, we do those kind of things. Uh, we love it, and um, um, I think I'm more busy now. And um, mm. I, I couldn't believe wherever I, I can't believe wherever I go, um, people just stop you for a photo still, and, and I hope you're going to stop soon. Yeah, as I say, I think a lot of people miss you. Uh, there's another one here I'm looking at, and this is, I don't know if this is especially put in one, but Andy Marinos is looking at you, though. You just crawled out of a cheeseburger in this picture. Miskin is looking for a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, yeah. what does that look say? Uh, you know, but he wish you were like me. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I would be terrified to look at a piece of cheese. Why was I looking at the coach like that? There's photographs with Ian McGeechen here and, uh, and with all the teammates. Also as well, part of your coaching setup. You having fun, and I think that was the key thing. You also knew when you could have fun as a, as a, boc, as a boc coach as well. Uh, and I think that's why a lot of the guys in the team yeah, enjoyed I think working with you. A lot of people are happy in life, you know. Um, I, I had a joyous time, and that is, that, that's far beyond being happy, you know. Um, you can make other people happy if, if you're joyful. Yeah. So uh, that's the one thing I won't allow people to steal from me. And I hope that I can make other people happy through, through, my, through my life. You get the final question, Simon. Oh, do I? Yes. Oh, cool. Sorry, uh, did, were you waiting? Yes. Yeah, no, just we were having such a nice chat. I know, oh, no, <laughs> but it's fine. It was interesting. Um, how did it la wind up that uh, Gavin Rich wrote your story? Because he wasn't always you know, your biggest supporter. I don't think he is. Uh, my biggest supporter. That's rich coming from the poor. Um, <laughs> you know, I identify him as somebody who can write. He's brilliant in writing and, and getting things across. And um, 
he was so negative towards me. He did such a lot of research on me. Mm. Um, I never, I didn't want anybody else to go do the same thing that he did already. And then I wanted to, 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 to bring out an honest book. So if you get somebody who wants to sing your praises, it will, it will be a, a, a book from one side. And mm. I, I wanted somebody to be negative too. And um, I think he did a hell of a great job, eh? Uh, yeah, that, and that's just from the book point of view, as, as opposed to one or two other guys uh, before you who actually brought them into their own camp. As in, uh, it was Harry who brought Mark Keohane into the camp, and I think the reason was to, to, because their biggest critic I had keep a meeting, them close to you. I had a meeting with him uh, before he wrote the book, and I told him I don't want him to change because, was because the way he wrote about me kept me on my toes, you know. Mm. And um, while we are sitting in New Zealand um, did, uh, doing a, a book interview, um, I picked up that he wasn't very happy and I said, what's wrong with you? And he said to me, I just, I just wrote a, a, a negative piece about you and John Smith today. I said, well, brilliant, man. Um, people will now know that you're stupid, so go, go, on, with, <laughs> <laughs> go on what you're doing. So, yeah, um, you don't buy people. You only use their strong points. And given strength in life is he can, he can, he can actually write brilliantly. Yeah. He's a very good journalist. Yeah. Very good journalist, very good. absolutely. Uh, Peter, great to have you. And thanks a lot to everyone who's tweeted. We've got so many through here as well. And Tikana Gaba, uh, Willie Westays, Mike in Hong Kong, uh, who actually wants you to go and speak at the Hong Kong Sevens dinner in 2013. So you've, you've, you've actually got a gig. You've got, a, you've you, got a booking through our show. So commission. You're the one, you're, you're the one who will organize it. And um, we'll go, me and you, because I, I can't read. So what? I'll get lost in the airport, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't read your own book either, then. <laughs> <laughs> I pay people to do it. I got it. I got Dick and then Gary to do it for okay, me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, Mike, we'll let you know how you can get hold of uh, of Dib's people and get him to the Hong Kong Sevens if he's available to chat at your dinner next year, Mike, in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, and to uh, Eric and Louise and Greg and uh, everybody, Kyle and Francois and, uh, and Stephen, uh, Kyle again, Dean, all of those guys. I have to ask Div. Your trademark moustache, would you ever, ever shave it off? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll shave it <laughs> off. If, if, if somebody now offers me a million bucks for cancer, million? for cancer, I'll do it. I'll do it now, right here. If they say, here's the million bucks, we give it for cancer. Oh, but we can give some cash. Just get the cash. Well, we don't have a million. We're, We're only going for two months. Then get two million then. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good cause. It's a yellow cause. We don't. We wear we we wear pink in this country for cancer, and we don't add to the to their lives. Give the money, man. Yes, I Keep your pink. I would love to be that guy that shaves your tash. No, it will, it will grow back again. <laughs> I hope everyone realizes that a tash is a mustache. Just to be uh, to be very clear. I think I'll, 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 I want to I want uh, Yellen Zeller to do it. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> same place where where Madiba made his first speech. You I think she'd want another million as well. Parade, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You could shave hers afterwards. <laughs> Simon, hey, how could you say that? We, she. It was, was going in, so well. I wasn't, I wasn't here. No, I we. Wasn't here. Dude, whatever you do, just say it wasn't me. <laughs> shaggy, <laughs> the Shaggy. Thing. Uh, did you did you always style your own moustache? Brother? Someone actually asked it on Twitter. That, did you actually have a moustache stylist or did you always like... You, style know, you know you know that when I was younger, coats under 21. Because you're one in your book. Oh, you uh, the beard, beard, the big beard, yeah. Yeah, But you also had a more bushier moustache when you're under 21. The yeah, picture I, in the book looks yeah, different. Ach, but you know, um, nowadays I'm smarter. Uh, uh, when I was younger, I was young and pretty, and now I still I'm, I'm not young anymore, <laughs> but I want to remain pretty, you know. So <laughs> you got the George Clooney going on there with a bit of the grey on the sides, uh, but I think it happens with all Springbok coaches. Dave, thanks a lot for joining us. Good luck with the book. And thanks, thanks for having for me, and well. um, I hope um, that your station will grow. Thank you very so much. So much that you guys um, really bring the good news to our people in our country. Absolutely. Well, it's all about sport, and there's not too many of those around. It's actually bizarre that South Africa doesn't have a proper dedicated sports channel, so that's why we decided to do it. Yeah, so. Brilliant. And you're welcome anytime and uh yeah i mean if we do grow enough maybe we'll have enough money to be able to get that moustache uh yeah. shaved and put the million in our size but who knows maybe someone will come forward and say we'll make an offer to do it nice to I'm have you thanks very much Div. that's peter thanks, Develius, the yeah. book's called politically incorrect that's what the cover looks like and it's available at all bookstores as well you can see it you cannot actually miss it if there's a bookstore it'll be there right in the front uh the forewords by uh captain john smith who uh, has also been on the show regularly. He's back in the country, actually. He just arrived back this week. And it says, Peter steered the ship and did a superb job. Victor Matfield also... Uh, he's There's a great chance here, and it could be a try. Oh, what a start. What an incredible score. 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mondays to Fridays, live on balls.co.za.